All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I'm going to be reviewing Dirini Rising by Katherine Kurtz. Um, you know, I got the entire Dirini series here, pretty much all of the books. Maybe three of them that I don't have. I've been collecting these things since I was a kid. This is one of the very first fantasy series that I got, you know, interested in, you know. You know, there was the Shannara series, then Tolkien, and then Lloyd Alexander and Dragon Lance and David Eddings and Thieves World and but this was this was in the you know, this was in the top, you know, ten early fantasy series that I read as a kid. And it's you know, it's uh, the first trilogy Dirini Rising, Dirini Checkmate. Hi, Dirini. You know, they came out in 1970. These are very, very early Daryl K. Sweet paintings on the cover. You know, Daryl K. Sweet was the guy that did the uh, Robert Jordan covers. He did a lot of covers in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And these are some of his most early ones. And I think they're pretty cool. So we're going to go through a lot of the cover illustration in this series and um, dissect a little bit of it. But this came out in 1970. You have to understand, in 1970, there were not a lot of fantasy series that you could even buy, purchase, and read. You know, there was Conan. There was maybe Fritz Lieber. There was uh, Lloyd Alexander. There was um, Lord of the Rings. There was only probably about five or six fantasy series you could even go to the bookstore and find this was one of them the Dirini books so this is like sort of the earliest early fantasy that the world had ever seen by Katherine Kurtz so she's kind of like the mother of fantasy uh and 1970 doesn't seem like that long ago but when you think about it and like i just said in 1970 there was not a lot of fantasy out on the bookshelves you know it wasn't until the 80s and stuff where it really started to get a lot so anyway katherine kurtz again i show off the store i show off books where uh i have met katherine kurtz in fact katherine kurtz was one of the fantasy writers that helped me in my own career she signed a lot of my books um, she even wrote me a letter. We became good friends back when I was in college. We even corresponded. She even wrote me letters. This was back in the day when I used to do illustrations for Dungeons and Dragons and Magic the Gathering. She was a fan of my artwork and um, she tried to help get me some book illustration jobs with Delray Books and things like that. And she, uh, me and her corresponded. She lived in Ireland at the time. She might still live in the Irish castle. I don't know. But I kept the letters. So one of the people that um, really kind of helped me out in my own career. So I owe her that. I owe her big time for that. So let's talk about these Dirini books. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. It's Dirini, Dirini. I don't know. I'll hold it up and you guys tell me what you think. Hi, Dirini. It looks like book one. Is the, which is the one we're going to review, is Dirini Rising. Again, a very early, early Daryl K. Sweet cover painting. Now, let's look at these covers before we get into the actual review of the book. So, this is kind of like a cartoony cover. Again, early Daryl K. Sweet. Probably one of the first covers he ever painted in 1970. But I love the series, how, how they um, put the scroll work on the edges. You notice how they put the scroll work there? on the backs, you know, these uh, little scroll work designs. You know, publishers don't do enough of that anymore. And then they sort of framed the paintings. This is a Daryl K. Sweet painting of book number uh, three. Just a nice, nice looking painting. That could be a Western painting. But I mean, look at the horses up there. And then of course we've got book number two and the old the old witch and the and the guy and so um just cool so those are the that's the first trilogy she wrote in 1970 and then she wrote the um the saint camber trilogy and we'll just show these again daryl k sweet paintings very early daryl k so these probably came out in 1972 73 so this is the second trilogy saint camber and the, again all daryl k sweet paintings 
on the covers. And then her third trilogy, the, um, the Histories of King Kelson, again, all illustrated by Daryl Sweet. And then her fourth trilogy, which um, was called the, um, the Heirs of St. Camber. And this was just a, this is just a shit mix of weird illustration here. So we've got some really good um, uh, illustration here by an artist named uh, Michael Herring. So Michael Herring did a great job with this one and then with this one. But then book three, I don't know what in all tarnation happened. Just a mishmash of, I mean, this came out in the early 90s when Photoshop was just starting to be the come the rage. And man, somebody Photoshopped a shit mix of bullshit on there. And I even talked, I even talked to Catherine Kurtz about this because this was the book that came out right when I met her and she did not like this cover. Did not like it. Let's, let's get to this book. Let's get to the book. So, I am going to be reading all of these books. There's a third trilogy that I don't have, and I should probably get it. But uh, not a third, a fifth. There's a fifth trilogy that's set in the same universe, the Dirini universe that I don't have, and I should probably get it. But let's talk about Dirini Rising, the book that we came to review, and uh, let's get into it. So what's this about? Like I said, one of the very first fantasy series ever, ever published for the world to read and consume. It is about King Kelson, the young boy. His father, Brian Haldane, uh, dies. They go out on a deer hunt, a stag hunt, and the, he dies. I mean, that's kind of cliche now, where they go, out, where the king goes out on a boar hunt with his son, and uh, then he dies, and then the son is left orphaned and has to rule the kingdom from there. I mean, it's sort of a cliche, but she started that cliche. So Brian Haldane and, and everybody go on a uh, deer hunt they're hunting for the stag and it, he dies he gets poisoned actually by the evil person that's that, that they're gonna have to fight and anyway king young kelsey kelson who's 14 years old he becomes the king and he's also got deer any magic now deer any magic and the church don't mix so this has got a very 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 religious component to it where the religious guys are just not always on the up and up. They're not always the nicest guys. They're kind of like the cat based off of the Catholic Church. Like if the Catholic Church, if Harry Potter was real, you know the Catholic Church would have a problem with that. And that's kind of what we've got here. Where during, there's magic, there's Harry Potter magic in this world, and the the main church that rules the lands has a major can problem with it, as religions would. And so the church fights the Dirini magic users. That's kind of the conflict we're dealing with here. And so King Young Kelson is known to be a possible wielder of this magic. And so he is tutored by three guys who are three of my favorite guys in all of fantasy. Like they show up in all of the, uh, let me put these books back up so we can kind of look at them here. Anyway, there's a, I didn't put the spines up. I don't edit, I don't plan any of this, folks. But anyway, this whole series is based off of this, the church versus the Dirini, okay? And, King, and, and there's these three characters that teach young King Kelson how to harness his magic. And it's Morgan, Derry, and Duncan. Those are the three guys. And I love these three guys because they are kind of throughout the series. And they're just dudes. They're just badass knights. They're, 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 uh, Morgan also um, kind of wields some of the magic but then there's um you know this book these books and here's some writing advice the evil person is the is, is the lady charissa and she um you know caused the she caused king brian to die with the heart attack he wasn't poisoned that's just the thing and anyway she she is fighting against kelson eh, there's a there's a lot of political intrigue here so i mean probably this is the precursor to almost game of thrones i would think you know, not there's no real quest in this. This is a lot of political intrigue. Political intrigue. This is like the precursor to all your political intrigue fantasy. Really, it really is, and it is steeped. It is rich in medieval history and medieval writing style. So, for you writers of fantasy, if you want to learn how to inject your writing with a very medieval flair to the language, so you just read anything Catherine Kurtz has done. 
And just pay attention to her word choice, the way she describes everything in her world. This is got these books have some of the most rich world building you will find in fantasy literature. And it is just absolutely steeped in medieval history because Catherine Kurtz got her PhD in just that very subject. I think. If I read the if I read the uh the uh, thing let me let me let me read the author bio see if I'm and did, 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 did. it just says here that she's a yeah she's a scholar of English history a trained hypnotist and a religious historian yeah so I was close many I don't think there's a degree in Middle East and evil history but there is a degree in religious history and things like that but it shows it shows in her writing I mean these could be literally historical this these could be like i i, I don't even know how to describe how fucking awesome the world building is i mean I'm at, I'm at a loss for words here i just think everybody if you are a fantasy writer if you love fantasy you'll love these just for how well they're written and how just interesting they are and how ahead of their time they were i mean like i told you this is kind of if you love game of thrones and the political intrigue and all of the political backstabbing and all of that, you will love this. If you like that type of novel rather than the quest and you go out and find a magic talisman to kill the, the evil dragon or you go throw a ring into Mount Doom or you, or you have to... There is no evil lord that needs to be killed and there is no quest of Fellowship of the Ring people that need to go kill him in these books. This is like Game of Thrones. This is the Lannisters and the Starks. This is religion versus magic. These books are fantastic. So if you want to uh, start the series, I would suggest getting Dorini Rising and reading the first trilogy and going from there. I give Dorini Rising a 9.5 out of 10. I think it is just super, super cool.